The fifth plenary session of the 19th CCP Central Committee concluded on October 29th after reviewing the next five-year plan along with the 2035 long-term plan. In regards to content, both plans mainly revolved around the development of the domestic and international dual-cycle economy. According to Reuters, Xi's dual circulation model entails a China that will shift its development to rely on internal circulation, that is, the domestic cycle of production, distribution, and consumption. Economist William Yu with the University of California, Los Angeles, said in an interview with Akpak Times that dual cycle is actually just a quote, beautiful slogan, because in reality, China's economy has a serious systematic imbalance and a set of problems that cannot be solved in the short term. Seemingly so, as China's dual cycle, according to an analysis quoted by Deutsche Welle on October 26th, is basically an empty slogan with very vague implementation details. Mr. Yu believes that the Chinese economy over the past few years has experienced significant falls, high debts, excessive investment loss, and huge real estate bubbles are all at the crux of the problem. As such, Yu says an effective solution is to increase consumption in China. However, this epidemic has, of course, interrupted such rising consumption, seen especially during this year's Chinese National Day weekend in October 1st, where consumption rates were even lower than that of last year's. This shows the limitation of domestic economic development. Even worse, Mr. Yu warns that the international, quote, cycle is even less optimistic. The United States has been the largest source of China's export surplus, which has greatly reduced. The industrial chain has moved out of China to Southeast Asia or returned to the United States. This trend is expected to continue in the future. And if Trump is ultimately re-elected, the U.S. will take more measures to sanction the CCP government. Mr. Yu explains, quote, No matter how good the slogan is, it is just a slogan. The actual situation is very challenging for the Chinese economy. It is very unfavorable, and everyone should pay special attention. A House of Cards To understand China's dual cycle strategy, some Chinese scholars point to the idea of the five dimensions. That is, one, domestic demand taking the lead, two, innovating technologically, three, improving the market system, four, achieving mutual promotion of the dual cycles domestically and internationally, and five, active opening up. But while Mr. Yu complimented that the five dimensions sounds very beautiful, he says the problem lies elsewhere. Rather, the government's actual policies have not aligned with these dimensions, and instead has continued to intervene in influential private companies such as Alibaba, violating the principles of the market economy and pulling economic development backward. The CCP, Mr. Yu pointed out, uses the market to allure companies from all over the world to come to China and force technology transfer. Far from true openness, the so-called Chinese technological innovation is even more problematic than many know. The CCP's so-called military-civilian cooperation in the past two decades has carried out state-sponsored cyber infiltration and attacks on developed countries, stolen businesses and technological secrets, and outraged the United States. As Mr. Yu mentions, quote, it's illegal to steal others' innovation and intellectual properties without compensation. He believes China hasn't collapsed yet because it can still repay old debts with new debts, but he laments that China's economy is just a house of cards, and when it collapses, the impact will be huge. A slow death. While the CCP continues experimenting with digital currencies, their intention remains well masked. As Mr. Yu explained, digital currency on the surface prevents corruption by allowing the trace of digital money. However, the system also allows the CCP complete control of monetary transactions of all Chinese people, especially dissidents. In other words, the CCP can punish disobedient citizens by freezing all of their digital funds and any associated bank accounts, rendering it unusable. Victor Nung, a senior banker based in Hong Kong, told the Apple Daily that Xi Jinping did not want to bear the responsibility of China's economic downturn. And as such, she wants to copy Mao Zedong's great steelmaking during the Cultural Revolution with his mobilization of hardware chip production among the Chinese population. The dual cycle is a path of no return, said Nung.